you guys welcome back to my channel today is going to be another like instructional leg workout video and I really genuinely love doing these because I feel like I can finally just give you guys like the 411 on the workout so you can get the most out of the workout and this workout actually was in my last video in my last vlog but I loved it so much and it was so different from my normal leg workouts that I've been doing that I really just wanted to do like an in-depth workout video for you guys so you know like form and all that so you can get the most out of each move so I'm just gonna hop right into it hop into the voiceover I hope you guys really love it. I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're down and haven't already. And yeah, happy lifting. What's up peeps? So I always start off my leg days with some dynamic stretches, which are different than static stretches. So static stretches are when you would be like sitting and holding a stretch. A dynamic stretch is essentially when you're taking your muscles through a movement in order to get them used to the range of motion and get them warmed up for movement. So as you can see, I'm doing some froggers into like a toe grab, I guess you could say. And when I come into that squat for a frogger, I always like to push my knees out. I really just do a different variations of like hip openers essentially just because obviously we're doing some squatting movements and stuff on leg days and my hips are always are what's really tight so then I move into some lateral lunges nice and deep staying nice and low and then I also I have no clue what these are called but I saw these on Instagram actually and I absolutely love them basically you just sit down you kind of fold over so your knee is touching the ground and then I do both of them at one time I absolutely love these you guys you definitely need to try them it helps up like open up my hips so much I've been obsessed with it so I love doing those I probably would say I hold I do each one for about 30 ish seconds just until I feel like I've gotten my fix this is me jamming out because I was vibing to a big booty remix 15 is the best one hands down then I move into glute activation if you don't do glute activation in the beginning of your leg days dude you gotta change that right now Glute activation has absolutely transformed my leg days. They just help to wake up and activate your glutes so that when you are trying to do other movements that your glutes will actually be more readily available. They will fire more readily instead of having other muscle groups take over the move. So I'm telling you, it really helps you feel your glutes throughout your leg days when you get them warmed up. So I like to start by doing like some one and one half squats. I'll do squat pulses. I kind of will do like constant tension squats, then also pulses. I'll do kickbacks. lateral kicks some glute bridges anything just to get my glutes warmed up and i do each move probably just only one set for anywhere from like 15 to 30 reps depending on the movement i just go basically until i get some blood flow and some pump in my glutes then this last one i've been absolutely loving so i do 10 glute bridges into 10 ISO hold abduction. So I will hold up in that glute bridge position, but press my knees outward and I'll do 10 of those abductions. Then I'll go straight into 10 more glute bridges and two straight 10 more abductions. And I'll basically repeat that for either two to three rounds total. I love it. It fires up my glutes so much. All right, so then after my warm up, I'm obviously moving into my first exercise, vibing again. I'm telling you guys, this big booty mix is magnificent. I've been obsessed with it. I've been listening to it nonstop. Okay, then I moved into back squats, which I actually haven't done in a while. So I always like to warm up a little bit just to get into the movement pattern and the flow. So I just did one set of 10 with just the bar. Then I did one set of 10 with 25s on each side. And then I moved into my working set. So then from there, I did one set at 135 pounds for 10. Then I moved into two sets at 145 pounds for 10, and then one more fourth set at 155 pounds for 10 reps. So when it comes to a squat in a high bar position, which is what I'm doing here, I just rest the bar right on my trap. So there really shouldn't be any pain in your neck. If there is, the bar is most likely too high on you and is probably sitting at the tops of your shoulders as opposed to a little bit lower on your traps. 
So I always initiate the movement by pushing my hips backwards and down as if I'm sitting into a chair. Doing so also helps to shift the weight onto your heels, which again will help to shift the focus of the squat onto your glutes, which I don't know about you, but that's always my main priority on leg days to try to hit the glutes as much as I can. And then I push up through my heels again and really try to push up through my glutes and get a nice little squeeze at the top. It's really important to not shove your hips forward. That can cause a lot of strain on your lower back. So I just try to think of it as contracting my glutes and squeezing my glutes, but just without thrusting my actual hips forward. So I kind of do it by tucking my tailbone a little bit just to get a nice squeeze in my glutes. Also super, super important to pretend like there's a board on your torso. So you don't want any excess curving or arching in your back. You want your lower back and spine to stay nice and neutral and you want your core to stay nice and tight in order to help keep your spine and lower back in a neutral position. I also like to keep my feet just about shoulder width apart with my toes a little bit pointed outward. So pretty similar to a sumo squat position. This also helps me to target my glutes a little bit better. Now moving into reverse lunges on the Smith machine. I haven't done these in a while, but these used to be my freaking bread and butter when I was in the beginning of college. I used to love these. So I really like doing reverse lunges on the Smith machine because it kind of takes away that stability aspect, which is good for athleticism. But when you're really trying to focus on hypertrophy, it's really nice to not need to stress about your balance and stability. So the assistance from the Smith machine just really helps you to focus on your glutes and the muscles that you're trying to target and that mind to muscle connection. So first I started off with a warm up set with 25 pounds on each side for five reps. Then I did one set of 12 for 35 pounds. And then I completely decided to ramp up my weight because for some reason I was feeling so good. Everything felt nice and good and kind of light. Honestly, I just felt really strong. So then I did two sets of eight with 45 pounds and one set of eight with 55s on each side, which was crazy to me. Definitely hit a PR on these. I just didn't even realize that I could push more weight. With a reverse lunge, I really like to say to sink into the lunge and I purposely word it like that to allow you to really push your hips back and let you feel the stretch in your glutes, which really allows you to feel it there better. So I really like to plant my foot and then I come back, sink into the lunge, like I said, and I try to stack my knee over my ankle this i'm telling you gets you the best stress stretch in your glutes and shifts more of the focus away from your quad and more towards your glute which again is my personal preference and then you want to push up through your heel so again like similar with the squats by sinking back and down and pushing your hips back to initiate the movement that helps to shift the weight onto your heels which inevitably makes it more glute focused by requiring you to push up through your heel same thing here, similar with squats. You want to keep your core nice and tight, your back in a nice neutral position. Also super important to not push up too much with that back leg. You don't want to cheat. Really all of the focus should be pushing up with your front legs heel is where the majority of the work should be happening. Then moved into some hip thrusts. And this was an awesome little superset that I did. And this was different from my normal routine. Usually I'll do heavy hip thrusts like in the beginning of my leg day but here i put them in the middle and i did a variation which was a b stance hip thrust so if you haven't heard of a b stance hip thrust very similar however basically it's essentially a single leg hip thrust if you will but there's assistance with that side leg so the goal with the b stance hip thrust is to kind of work one glute at a time so as you can see my right leg is a little bit pushed out compared to my left leg. And essentially that is gonna just simply be a dead leg. So 70% of the work is going to be done with that working leg and the other leg is going to take on that 30%. So here I'm doing 10 reps on each leg. All the same form rules apply here, except for that dead leg is gonna be kicked out a little bit just so it's not going to be doing a majority of the work. So same form, like I said, your working leg is going to be in normal position. Your knee is going to be stacked over your ankle when you come up and lock out. There should be a nine degree angle in your knee you're going to be pushing up through your heel looking straight ahead to help create a posterior pelvic tilt and engage your glutes the middle of my back is on the bench and i'm coming up and locking out for a nice thorough contraction at the top and again essentially my legs are staggered if that kind of helps you visualize it 
So then I superseted that with banded body weight hip thrusts. And here I did 30 reps. Again, same exact forearm pointers apply, except now we're just using two legs simultaneously. So both of your weight should be evenly distributed on each leg. I have the band to help add resistance in the horizontal plane to recruit the sides of my glutes and those little muscles around your hips that are with your glutes as well. So your gluteus medius and maximus, this will help to round out your glutes and then give you just a nice shapely booty. I did 20 reps at a normal tempo and then the last 10 i like to pick up the pace a little bit and do the last 10 a little bit quicker and the whole time during each hip thrust it's really important to make sure that you're keeping your knees out against the band you want to resist your knees from caving in because that will also help you to recruit your glutes and specifically those sides of your glutes as well then i am moving into sumo goblet squats i have not done these they've never been like a really big staple in my routine but i did these like a week ago and i've actually really really liked them here i did three sets of 15 the boxes are completely unnecessary i also realized that i don't even need them but i thought that i did basically the point of being elevated is just to help you get a greater range of motion and depth if you need it if your flexibility allows i have pretty long legs and i'm not super flexible especially in my hips so as you can see the dumbbell isn't even going below the block so i really can just do them on the ground but if you're someone who's really flexible you might benefit from being elevated so you can get some greater depth but so basically all i'm going to do is get a nice sumo foot stance so i have my feet about shoulder width apart my toes slightly pointed out probably at a 45 degree angle and i do a normal squatting motion so same thing i push my hips back and down i initiate the movement by breaking at the hips which will also allow me to shift my weight back onto my heels. Again, making it glute focused. I come up through the movement, push through my heels while keeping a nice tight core, a nice neutral spine, no arching or curving in the back and coming up and getting a nice little thorough contraction at the top. Again, as you can see, I'm not shoving my hips forward, but as you can see, when I come up, I pause for a half of a second and just hone in on that contraction and really feel my glutes. Then I finished off with some hip abductions. I love these again, similar to why I would use a band with the banded hip thrusts. This is to target the sides of your glutes. Again, add some resistance in the horizontal plane, target your gluteus medius and minimus, which will help to round out the glutes and give your butt a lot more shape. Here I did three sets of 20 and you don't have to do them raised up out of the seat. I just personally do it because the seat at my gym can't be adjusted and it's way too far back. But if your machine is similar to mine, I like to put my feet at the very edge of the foot pad and at the very outskirts, so the sides of it. This I I find just helps me really target my glutes the best and I really just focus on sweeping my knees outward by contracting my glutes if that makes sense so I really try to think about my glutes working and focus on the pressure point at the outsides of my knee to push the pads outward That workout was honestly so good. Not only was I like mentally in it again, but also just like the actual workout itself was so awesome. Just like literally mechanically or like structurally it was an amazing workout. Definitely recommend and you should try it. All right, that's everything for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and if you learned something, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my videos and my channel. And I also just wanted to say thank you guys so, so, so much for all of your love and support lately. This little channel and community has been growing and I actually finally have been able to qualify for mon monetization on this channel, which really is not about money at all. I'm going to be making slim to nothing but it's just kind of the concept of the fact that I just feel more official if you will and that I can really can do this long term and I don't know how to explain I guess just like validation that like we're growing and that I really can make a career out of this and a future out of this so I don't know I just want to thank, say thank you guys so so much and I love the community that we're forming I really feel like we have like-minded individuals here and it just means so much to me that you guys support what I create and also makes my heart feel so full that my content can help you guys in any way. So with all that being said, I'm sending you so much love. Thank you again, of course, from the bottom of my heart. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, oh.